Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, in this particular video I am going to show you how to make a PCR reaction mixture and how to use uh, a PCR or how to run a PCR. Now the uh, first thing you need for the making of the uh, PCR reaction mixture uh, is the uh, master mix and this is the one that we are using uh, in our lab. Uh, the second thing you need is uh, the nucleus free water so these are the first two things that are making for making of the PCR reaction mixture uh, what you have to do is you have to take uh, a big tube uh, a large tube for making a large amount of the solution uh, which will be further transferred to the uh, small PCR tubes that I am going to show you now uh, these are the uh, PCR tubes these are actually the tubes that are used in the PCR and you have to keep them in the PCR tray. The blue one over here, that is actually the uh, PCR tray in which we keep the PCR tubes for running of the PCR. And next, what you have to do is uh, you have to uh, label these PCR tubes. Uh, labeling is very important so uh, you can uh, know about the uh, sample after running of the PCR so uh, what you have to do is you have to uh, label them the codes you want and you have to just uh, put down those codes uh, in your notebook and on the uh, tube as well so that you can recognize your sample now uh, in this particular video we are running uh, like uh, 11 uh, PCR reaction um, so 11 uh, reactions we are running so what you have to do is that for one reaction uh, we usually uh, need 12.5 uh, microliter of the uh, master mix so for 11 we are actually adding 137.5 microliter uh, to the large tube so for uh, one PCR reaction uh, you need 12.5 microliter of this particular uh, PCR uh, this particular master mix so add 137.5 microliter for 11 reaction in the uh, big tube. The next thing you have to do is you have to add the uh, nucleus free water and uh, for one reaction uh, we need 9.5 microliter of the nucleus free water. So for making solution for 11 reactions we are actually adding uh, 104.5 microliter uh, to the tube that we have added the master mix in the first place now we are adding 104.5 microliter nucleus free water uh, these are the uh, primers uh, we have already prepared them so you have to thaw them uh, you have to add uh, one microliter uh, each of the forward and the reverse primer So add one microliter of the uh, reverse and the forward primer to the tubes that already contain the uh, master mix and the nucleus free water. This is the uh, reverse primer. Add one microliter of this reverse primer. Now you have to uh, vertex this whole solution uh, so that you can actually get a, a uniform solution so all of the things they get mixed well, uh, well with each other. Now you have to add uh, 24 microliter from this particular solution uh, into each of the PCR tube. Uh, 24 microliter in each of the PCR tube so that depend on the number of the samples you are running. So we have prepared this particular for uh, 11 reactions. So we are now adding uh, 24 microliter to each of the PCR tube. Now you have to add uh, a one a microliter of your DNA, your sample DNA. Uh, in this particular case, we have extracted the uh, DNA from the uh, bacteria as we are working on the antibiotic resistance genes of these bacteria. 
so you'll be adding uh, one microliter DNA into uh, each of the tube you have to mix them well so that all of the content they uh, get mix mix well with each other before you uh, run them in the PCR after doing that you have to uh, introduce the uh, you have to introduce the tray this particular PCR tray uh, into the PCR and after keeping that in the uh, PCR you have to close the lid of the PCR machine <coughs> now it's time to uh, run the PCR before running the PCR you have to uh, set up a program uh, so what you can do is uh, you have to uh, run the setup you can go to the uh, open method and uh, say for example you have already a program with the name of the ctx mg uh, you can actually run the pcr in two modes uh, one is known as the uh, gradient mode and the other one that is known as the normal pcr so the gradient pcr that is actually uh, run in those particular cases uh, where you do not know the anything temperature of the primers that you are using for the PCR reaction. So uh, in the first place I am going to tell you how to set up the PCR machine for the gradient one. What you have to do is you have to go for the very flex option and in the very flex option what you can see is the uh, you have to change the anything temperature. You can actually give a range like one is 52 the other one is 53 and the other one is 54 so usually the uh, PCR machine that is split into three columns and uh, one of the column that will be operating on 52 degrees centigrade the other one on 53 and the other one on 54 degrees so you can actually uh, test three temperatures uh, for optimization of the annealing temperature for your primer so once you have given the uh, temperature what you have to do is you have to go for the done and when it's done, uh, the next step that you are going to do is you have to go for setting of the uh, timings uh, for how much time you need the uh, annealing. Uh, usually uh, it's 30 seconds. Uh, 30 seconds is usually enough for the annealing. And you have now entered the one. So this is how you are actually going for the uh, gradient PCR. And you have to name it like the program. The uh, gene that we are running in this particular video is the guide B gene. So the uh, pro name of the program that is the guide is B and now that is saved uh, in other options uh, uh, if you can see on the screen it can actually tell you uh, many other things like one of the important thing that it's going to tell you is the uh, temperature of the lid uh, and in this particular case it is like 100.105 uh, degrees centigrade and the reason we keep the uh, temperature of the lid higher than the denaturation temperature is that we do not want the evaporation of the uh, PCR reaction mixture. So if the temperature of the lid is high, it actually prevents the process of the evaporation and the uh, amount of the uh, and the concentration of the PCR reaction mixture that do not get disturbed. The other thing it can tell you is the volume of the PCR. In this particular case, we are using like uh, 25 microliter because 24 microliter we were using the uh, uh, master mix solution and one microliter we added the DNA. Uh, in other cases, in normal PCR, if you know the optimum temperature for your primers, uh, you can actually go for the uh, other method or the normal method, I would say. And in that particular case, what you can do is you can uh, you have already made you have already made a program with the uh, set temperatures and in that particular case is you have to turn off the uh, very flex option so uh, the temperature that will be same in all of the three blocks of the pcr like if you can see over here all of them it is 52 now so when it's 52 that means all of the uh, pcr is now operating at uh, uh, 52 degrees centigrade the concentration of the uh, uh, or the volume that is 25 microliter in the pcr tubes and the temperature of the lid that is 105 degrees centigrade uh, the other information that you can see on the uh, screen you have already saved the program for the guide USB so if you look at the screen the information that you actually see 
is the the first one is the uh, initial denaturation usually there are three stages the stage one the stage two and stage three so uh, in the uh, stage one you can actually see the initial denaturation at 95 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes then uh, denaturation for one minute and then annealing for 52 degrees centigrade 30 seconds then the uh, extension at 72 for one minute and then the final extension at 72 for seven minute and after when the uh, process is complete you can actually store the pcr at uh, the pcr product at four degrees centigrade this is 25 microliter of the volume uh, so when you are done with all of the uh, parameters you have made the program next you can what you can do is we are ready to run it and then we are going to press the start run and the process that has been initiated the pcr it has just started uh, and it is going to take about two hours and 11 minutes uh, to complete the 35 cycles for the amplification of the uh, guy rays bg so if you uh, like the video uh, please subscribe to my channel hit the like button and share it with your friends and in the next video i'll show you how to run uh, uh, jet electrophoresis for the pcr products